AM 1300 WMEL. The views expressed on the following program are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and are not necessarily those of WMEL staff, management, or advertisers. This is Just Actor, folks, your host for Helping Seniors, the radio arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. The purpose of our organization is to educate, inform, and connect seniors and those that care for seniors with resources that seniors need. The phone number here at the radio station, and Kay and I are the KR panelists, is one of my panelists, the Kay Kaiser, our information specialist. And the phone number here at the station is 631-1300, 631-1300 if you have a question, and you might about some of the things we're going to talk about today. But the number over at the office is 473-7770 if you want to call Kay at the office. The sponsors for the first part of our radio show today include Gentiva Home Healthcare, the Eye Institute, Solid Bite Dental Implant, Bill Johnson, Elder Law Attorney, WMELAM 1300, this radio station, Wustoff Hospital Systems, Levin Home Care, Ren Care Medical Alert System, and folks, that's the button system you wear around your neck or your wrist or on your body. And for those of you that really are in danger of falling, even in your own home, think carefully about getting one of these medical alert systems. The one that Rencare sells, the basic system is 29 a month. Just for peace of mind, it's sure worth that. And look, I'm not promoting any one of our services over another, but sometimes we need to think a little bit harder about what we can do economically to take care of ourselves and prevent a great expenditure of funds and blood. Because when you fall, as an older person, it's one of the most dangerous things that you can experience. So think about the medical alert system, especially if you live at home. The Social Club, which is an adult daycare down on 5200 Babcock Street in Palm Bay. Ebony News Today and Atlantic Shores Rehabilitation Center. Yeah. And that's my curse commercial for today, folks. But uh, I will talk about something with Kay this morning or this afternoon about what we're going to do about a provider network because the title of the show today is simply Elder News Update. And I thought it was time that Kay and I just took the time to go over with you, our listeners, what it is that we're finding that needs fixing, that our commissioners need to know more about, and that seniors and those that care for seniors themselves need to know more about. So with that thought in mind, Kay, you know, we've been in business one year now, almost. Next week will be one year. and uh, Time sure goes fast. <laughs> yeah, it does go fast. It does. But what is your prognosis about what, what we've done and what you see as us being able to do to help seniors here in Broward County? And why is it important that people know about what we do? Well, it's extremely important because we're really completing service in which people have no clue where to turn for resources that are available to seniors. Now, I get calls from from their children who are trying to help mom and dad, and they're having problems trying to navigate the elder system. So our purpose is really to try to provide that caller with an appropriate resource but you know, Joe, it's nine times out of ten, it's usually more than one need that caller is calling yeah, about. Yeah. The uh, one of the saddest things I think, Kay, is that uh, it's very difficult to get people to believe that there are many wonderful systems out there that can help them. But one of the hardest darn things to do is figuring out how to access that system because um, the the systems we have in place today with some of our uh, our uh, our monitoring and some of our awareness programs frankly it just isn't good i agree and it's a lack of it's a lack of information you know we we'll talk a little bit about the survey results here coming up but you know a lot of people are saying they want access to more information. And I know even you, Joe, you've, you've made some calls to the state and so forth, and you're being put on hold for a, a lengthy amount of time and frustrating and trying to get through to get an appropriate answer. 
and you've been in the older system for what more than 25 years so i can imagine how other people out there are trying you to, don't have to point out how old i oh. am <laughs> you, know, say, you know women take that as an offense when make when men talk about you say you can't ask a woman how old they are and you're just tell me i'm an old geezer no i, I could I'm have said kid. that you were starting at 25 so that would make you only 50 <laughs> that's right i'm kind of holding it well 59, 69. There you go. <laughs> 79. So, all kidding aside, folks. In 1996, United Way did a survey here in Burrard County of the needs for seniors and children. And they identified 18 pressing needs. Now, to my knowledge, that was the... Last time anything like this was done, Kay, until we put a survey out about two and a half months ago, and we've gotten well over 300 uh, returns from that survey, and of those 18 needs that were identified in 1996, folks, 12 of those 18 needs that affect seniors still exist today. And eight of those 12 are extremely important. Kay mentioned some statistics. The survey, Carrie Fink, who is the president of TYG Media, and some volunteers analyzed all of these surveys and put everything together in a report Mm -hmm. that we will soon have on our website, helpingseniorsofavar.org. And you are quite welcome to take a look at that because if you want to be well informed about what you think you as a senior might need or what you think some fellow seniors need, I think you'd be amazed when you look at that because of the most pressing needs out of 100%, 17% report needing better access to information on aging. Right. And that, along with needing help with finances and managing bills, was the other 17%. And those were the two most pressing needs. Right. Now, along with that, the next most important was health repeated items as most pressing, and then needing help with caregiving and caregivers, and then affordable housing, then isolation and feeling alone, and then needing help with medical care. And the last one of the eight and 5% of the surveys was the need for more or better social activities. So here we're talking about information, awareness, finances, isolation, loneliness, mm-hmm. affordable housing, and medical care. And darn it, Kay, these are the things that almost all seniors uh, talk about. All right. Uh, you know, I want to make a comment because one of the one of the large percentage was isolation. I get a number of calls from women, particularly who have lost their husband, living alone. And they're just lonely. They have no one to talk to. They have no one to, you know, look after them. The family's far away, and they're all alone. So I take these calls, and I say, it's okay. I will talk to you. And we're going to hopefully have some volunteers here in the future that we could perhaps have some callers, have those volunteers call some of these lonely people just as a check-in to say, hi, how are you today? It means so much. It does, Kay, and uh, one of the things that um, I, I, so I was thinking about one thing while you were talking there, um, getting people to uh, know what is available, it, it, it seems like a, a never-ending task. Uh, uh, I, I get frustrated because uh, I know the programs are there. I know people can get help. But I also am so familiar, and I, I would like for you to, to talk to our listeners about this part of, of our work. Um, we know that people can get help. We know that. But we also know that people get discouraged because uh, of the lack of face-to-face contact. Right. And in second place, having a friendly voice on the other end of the telephone that asks a pertinent question. You know, you can call some of the agencies, and um, you've got a, a story I hope you'll tell us sometime during the day about the 
the letter you got about the person that uh, had somebody trying to beg from him at their house. Right. I think it's very interesting because this is something people need to know more about. But um, we find that uh, people are reluctant to uh, ask for the help. And until we make a, get a mindset developed that, that we need to ask questions, we're not going to solve this problem, Kay. That's right. That's right. Make that call. Our telephone number, once again, is our area code 321-473-7770. Um, and if I'm on the other line, by all means, leave a message because I always return my calls. But take that first step. We're, we're here to help you in our elder system. And there's really not a day that goes by that I pretty much discover another resource. So it's it's me being in this position as information specialist, you know, just the amount of resources out there, it's incredible. And people just don't have a clue. You know, it's not like the picking up the telephone directory anymore. Yeah, well, that, that's, that was what I, and you, you, you said something, you keyed what I was thinking about her. I, I sort of lost my track, uh, uh, chance of thought for a second, folks. But what I was trying to get at was the fact that uh, when you call Kay, she'll ask you questions. She'll listen to what you're saying, and then she'll ask questions. Right. And she invariably, and I do the same thing when people call me. Invariably, I'll turn up something that uh, it might be new to me. It might be new to Kay. Mm-hmm. But uh, we have access to resources and we know who to call that we might be able to shed some light on something you don't know anything about. So when you make the phone call to Kay, you do two things. You get information for yourself mm-hmm. and you help alert her to things that we maybe need to do something about that we simply just haven't thought about. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, we know we can't help 100% of our callers, but the large majority of, you know, my responses, if I come against a, a brick wall a little bit on something, I, I, I feed off of you here, Joe, and bounce it off yeah. you, too. So we're all in this together. But I want to really cite an example that I found was quite interesting here okay. today. Um, brought a, I brought a, a printed copy of one of our surveys, and this lady says, We need dental care very badly. I have all stubs on the bottom gum and a broken denture on top. I cannot afford dental care. It is affecting my health. I choke each time I eat. So here's something, you know, the results of the survey, people putting their comments in here, it's extremely important. So I called this lady this morning, and I found out and this is something that a lot of women are unaware of, and men, that her husband was a Vietnam veteran. He served as the base photographer during the Vietnam War. And I said to her, you, are you familiar with the aid and attendance program? She said, I have no idea. What is it? So I went on to explain a little bit and gave her a direct number. And But this... Just that information, if she gets approved with by her by her salary here, it was some eleven hundred maybe a month. She she could actually afford those tinctures and be yep. able to chew. So one thing leading to another. It's extremely important, you know, to understand that we're here to help you, and the fact that, uh, you know, just talking to her a little bit, you know, not not just saying. I picked up your comments from the survey, and I said, but now she has a glimmer of hope to have additional income. Yeah. It's interesting that you bring that up, too, Kay, because uh, those of you that don't know about our website, it's this. Write it down, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. And if you go to that website, you will see a number of shows about dental care. With Dr. Sheldon, Dr. Fortado, and mm-hmm. uh, Matt Sheldon. And the reason I bring that up is because Bill Johnson, uh, one of the top elder law attorneys in, in Broward County, uh, keeps me posted on what's happening on the uh, National Associ- Association of Elder Law Attorneys. And uh, I pulled something off of an email he sent me this morning, and I'm going to read directly, and, and I think... It's something I'm real. I want you to listen real close. 
When Medicare was enacted in 1965, more than half of Americans had over 65 had no health insurance. We think we got a problem today. Look what happened back in 65. Wow. The fact that Medicare provided affordable basic health insurance was a huge boon for older Americans. Disabilities was added in 1972. But despite all these advances over the past 50 years, Medicare can do no more to safeguard olders and those with – it can do a lot more to uh, help those with disabilities and being older. But – Medicare still lacks coverage in three important areas. And just to pick up on what Kay said, and, and, and we are doing everything we can to point out the connection between oral health, dental care, and, uh, and disease in elderly, elderly people. But oral health and dental care are particularly important for older people and people with disabilities. Unfortunately... Efforts to clarify and expand Medicaid coverage, Medicare's coverage of dental services have been stymied. They've also been stymied for eye care and hearing aids. So think about that for a minute, folks. Kate has pointed out something. We've got close to 75,000 veterans in Verrett County. There's a chance that many of the people living alone on reduced incomes are eligible for VAA in attendance. And if you're eligible for that, you now qualify for eye care, hearing aids, and dental care. It's amazing. Yet, you know, we try to point this out in our in our articles in Senior Scene, Hometown News, um, Spotlight, our radio shows, our television shows. Mm-hmm. But, okay, until we can get people to home in on the fact that we now have 15 new TV times a week on Channel 499. Right. That's at 8 a.m. in the morning, folks, and at 4.30 and 5 p.m. in the evening. Three, five days a week we have new TV shows at 8 a.m., 4.30 p.m., and 5 p.m. on Channel 499. That's the Space Coast right. Government Channel. Monday and, through and Friday. Commit, yeah. And it's Monday through Friday. And we're going to publish, promote 15 new shows on those times. So there's a wealth of information out there. And when you're talking to your friends, you need to tell them about it. Because the, like mm-hmm. the show that Kay and I are doing today is archived on our website. Information is key to living and, and, and at least having some kind of a chance to age with dignity, Kay. Absolutely. But it's... You know, it's not like the VA advertises that, hey, hey, everybody out there, if you have a, you've been a veteran, we're here to help you maybe get some more money. That type of stuff most people don't even know about. It's amazing. Yeah. And, but see, you pick up on that when people call you because I, and I know we haven't, I know we haven't done this, but this is something I'm, I'm going to ask you to do when you analyze your, your database. Uh, let's see if we can figure out how many of the people that we've helped in our first year in existence that have we've sort of turned up that they're eligible for VA aid I think that would be an interesting t- yeah, that statistic. Would be. And it's something that the commissioner should know and our commission on aging should know. And it's something that we have already pointed out right. in our advocacy plan, which is just about ready to go to the commissioner's folks. So we've been a, a four or five month effort of uh, uh, between 20 and 40 people working along with uh, 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 results of over 300 surveys have put together an advocacy council recommendation to the county commissioners about what we should do about promoting the development of an aging plan. Um, I'm well, excited about it, Kay. One particular graph that was a result of the of the survey, and the question was, does our county need a written aging plan? It's very important, was the top rating. 63% responded, absolutely. Yeah, but at the same time, we had a large number of people say, what is an aging plan? That is correct. That is See, correct. 
many of us, you know, we pay our Social Security money. We pay into that for our whole working life. And then we get to be 62 or 65 or 60 or what it is. Now we'd like to take Social Security. But we don't really understand what some of the benefits are that accrue to us mm-hmm. by virtue of the fact that we paid into that system. Uh, one thing that, that uh, Bill Johnson does, folks, is by sending me this stuff from the National Association of Elder Law Attorneys, he gives me a lot of information that I use in the articles I write for Hometown News and for the newspaper. And one of them is this, 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 this I'm going to use the word mess with uh, yeah. a K laugh, <laughs> Medicaid <laughs> expansion. Right. Uh, Heavens to Betsy. There's just so many things that people don't understand about it. And I wrote an article, and to make sure I don't get myself in a board in trouble, I, I send it to two attorneys and ask them to verify what we're doing. And they're both Medicaid expansion experts, as expert as anybody else could be. Mm-hmm. And I'm waiting for an answer. But uh, that's the type of thing I think that you and I both do, okay? And why, why uh, helping seniors is, is something that's good. Absolutely. Again, yeah, we're good. Listen, I, we got, Vern is going to cut me off here. He's going to take our mid show break, folks. Uh-huh. And we'll be back. And uh, I promise I'll let Kay talk more in the second half of the show <laughs> because we, we're going to get back on question two. But uh, I hope you enjoy today. Stay with us, though. AM 1300 WMEL. This is Joe Steckerberg. we live with the second half of Helping Seniors uh, Radio Show today, the second half of the show. And I remind you again, the purpose of our show is to inform, educate, and connect seniors and those who care for seniors with resources to help them age with dignity. The phone number here at the radio station is 631-1300. The number each K at the office. Our information specialist is 473-7770. And our sponsors for the second half part of the show include Senior Scene Magazine, Hometown News, Spotlight Magazine, Seniors Helping Seniors, The Fountains of Melbourne, Beth Courtney, the Braswell Financial Team, Barbara McIntyre, who is a... uh, uh, Specialist reverse, in reverse mortgage. Yeah, specialist in reverse mortgage. I'm trying to get that out. <laughs> uh, Kenneth Chiropractic, Canadian Meds of Melbourne, Weedham and Malik uh, Attorneys, Vitas Hospice, and Peaceful Beach Mediation. And that's uh, managed by uh, Brooke Goldfarb. And Brooke is a, uh, an attorney that believes in uh, trying to solve problems with elders before you get into a divorce court. So we have some wonderful sponsors that they try to do everything they can to help people. Sure. But the one thing I wanted to do on the second part of the show is, uh, you know, I keep saying that uh, we've done a lot of case management. We've had a lot of phone calls. But I think it's really important that you understand uh, what we're talking about when we say phone call and when we say case management. Kay has received hundreds of phone calls, but she has actually done over 500 individual cases of case management. This means that she's talked to people, found out problems, got them directed to problem resolution, and some of those uh, initial contacts have resulted in three, four, five return calls. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's got a got a note this morning, and I want you to listen to what Kay's going to talk about how this guy was trying to prey on a. Uh, uh, an elderly woman, and what the woman did, she used her head, I think, and she she solved her problem. But she did this a lot because of what she had talked to Kay about. So, Kay, you take it away. Okay. I'm going to just read directly from the letter here, Joe, if I may. She states, Friday morning I had a minor situation, and I didn't know what to do, so I tried seniors versus crime. The first number, I got a recording. The second number I got from a neighbor was disconnected. So I dialed the 911 number and said it was not an emergency, but I wanted to report something. The operator said, wait, I'll connect you. I still had no number, but I was connected. I reported a young man knocking on my door and demanding money to get home, and then he kneeled on my porch and pleaded for money. Of course, I did not open the door. I should have said, do you want me to get my husband to tell you no? Of course, I have no husband. 
The young man then went to the neighbor who had given me the disconnected number and scared her to death. She screamed, and her husband did come and ran him off. He next was kneeling on the porch of a neighbor across the street, but again Jackie's husband ran him off. An officer did come and told me I had done the right thing, and asked which way he went. He said to report anything suspicious because most robberies happen in the daytime. The neighbor said she had the magnet all over the house with an emergency number on it, but it was no longer good. How are we to know? The officer gave me a new number, but I guess in the future I'll just call nine one one and say not an emergency, as I did. You hate to get a recording or disconnect disconnected numbers. I guess there is no solution to that one. The problem here at Fox is when Kay she didn't mention it again, but the number, the senior versus crime number, they're only open one day a week. Right. So what is what kind of a resource? If you got seven days in a week, twenty four hours in a day, and they're open theoretically one day a week for a couple of hours. What do you do the rest of the time? That's right. How, how do you solve the problem? Well, I think this this uh, this actually was a caller who wrote me this letter, and I think she did use her head. She did call nine one one at least and say and stated at the front end that it was not an emergency, but you know to report that there are people out there taking advantage of of seniors. You know, there's all kind of scams, but to have somebody prey upon a senior during the day, which the officer told her that was the Largest amount of when robberies take place in the day. In the daytime. Right. That's exactly right. And folks say, you know, Kay mentioned the scam business again. Believe me, the grandparent scheme is extremely prevalent right now. There are more older people getting phone calls and emails from supposed grandchildren stranded in countries. Right. And you need to send money to help me get home. Don't believe it. It's not true. Or um, if you get an email, don't open it up either. Yeah. Uh, if you got a question about that, call your call your call your son or your daughter and find out where their where where their child is. Right. You know, uh, anybody that uh, gives money to anybody by virtue of a phone call or an email message or mm-hmm. some, any other way. I, I just really ask you not do that. In fact, call Kay before you do it and see yes, what she says to you. Absolutely. I, you know, sometimes it's just so much better to have two sets of eyes on something than just one set because, you know, as we get older, we want to be needed. We want to be loved. We want to be useful. We want to be helpful to people. But sometimes that need of ours overshadows our need or our uh, Ability to use our head. Right, to think logically about yeah. it. And, you know, the, the other thing that I discovered, too, Joe, was the fact that if somebody sends back to a contest, you know, to win an extreme amount of money or anything, guess what those companies are doing? They're selling your name and address to other companies. I actually went to an event talking about the scam with the Rockledge police, and this lady came in with not one, but two full grocery carts full of mail that just from entering one contest so it just continues Did she had done yeah one person one person holy mackerel yeah hey folks if you got if you really want to spend your money um helping seniors is going to have their first big fundraiser on the 17th of october i'll plug it right now there you go and we're calling it a collectible and art auction When I say collectible, folks, those of you that uh, can appreciate the history of our country, uh, my brother has probably won an Indian Arrowhead Indian artifact collection that uh, almost rivals that at the Smithsonian. And uh, I wasn't aware of the significance of some of this stuff, but some of the arrowheads date back to 8,000 B.C., that makes them 10,000 years old. Wow. My brother found these things in Kentucky, and I was with him some of the time. And um, Between the two of us, we've, we've coughed up a seven or eight of these arrowheads, and uh, we had a fellow that does gold wire jewelry, turn these things into uh, like a, uh, a necklace and uh, earrings. Uh, so they'll be for sale at, at the auction. We've got 35-person uh, handmade rugs. We've got... Uh, 
uh, World War II uh, duplicate-type posters that are going to be framed in teakwood decking from a submarine rescue vessel from World War II. I carried this stuff around for 50 years. It's time to use some of it. I thought you were only 50. Uh, Well, (laughs) yeah, no, more than that. But I think one of the big things that we're we're looking at, a lot of you that have followed the uh, the last Super Bowl, um, we have a couple of good contacts. One of them is a guy named Joe Bellino who won the Heisman Trophy at Navy. And Joe took uh, two of these posters, the Super Bowl posters, that the artist uh, Charlie Fazzino hand-signed for us. And uh, we sent them to uh, Joe Trancini, who was the quarterback of the 1960 Navy team. He sent them to Joe Bellino, and Joe has now sent the posters on to uh, Coach Belichick and Tom Brady at the po- at the Patriots and ask them to sign these. We will have those for sale at the art auction. So when I say it's going to be something different, uh, John Harper is working on uh, on stuff from uh, from uh, the major leagues. Uh, we'll, have a, we'll have paraphernalia. Have you even got a, a signed copy photo of the great white fleet that President Roosevelt sent around the world in the state of 1907? A recruiter gave me that up and wow. when I had come out of a Navy recruiting area up and uh, gave it to us up in Michigan someplace. Or uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. But what I'm what I'm trying to get at, Kay, is that you know we do fundraising to help put this program together. Mm-hmm. We depend on people to help us uh, make donations to keep it going. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, they're they're willing to part with their money in so many ways, and I don't even know what they're going to return on it. Get their return on their dollar, but right. you know, if people donate to helping seniors. I can assure you, donor, potential donor, that what you give to us will be used wisely to help other people. So, But one of the things that Kay has turned up is, and, and I've known about this for a while, and we're just getting it re- reaffirmed, is that we need a better provider network to help seniors. Yes. Um, uh, Kay, why don't you go in and, and tell people what? Because the roofing problem is a big. Problem. Oh yeah. Well, we've we've entered our rainy season here. It's a typical Florida afternoon, late afternoon storm rolling in here, and recently, here we go again. I'm getting a lot of calls with uh, seniors who are needing their roof repaired, or they need a new roof, and looking at that. You know, we're, if we try to reach out in our community, we've got some fantastic businesses and business owners that are very trustworthy, ethical, that are not going to take advantage of seniors, and that is a key. Um, we hope to maybe that they could actually discount as being part of this directory uh, towards the senior callers that are needing help. So I'm going to put a shout out there that if you are in the business of roofing, contractor, any type of business that you feel like people are looking, you, they they just don't want to start going down their, to the, they still use telephone books and going into the yellow pages. But those you who are internet, print. yes, that's a problem. But you don't know who's on the other end there. Yep. So we want to really be able to develop a provider network that's going to be beneficial when somebody needs the specific work done. Yep. We started this when I was a director with the Alzheimer's Foundation back in 1997. We started putting together a list in Burroughs County, and we were underwritten by an insurance company out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. They gave us $10,000 to start putting this thing together. And we started hooking up businesses uh, across the United States that callers could call in and get connected in and uh, – other cities have made this part of the Interfaith Action Program. There were over 1,100 programs involved, Kay. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it sort of went by the board when I stopped doing it. But we, it's, there's a great need for it. And we, and there you is. yourself, you've told me that you have found uh, people that provide services that they've offered as much as 30% discounts to right. seniors uh, if they knew that they needed help. So what we're doing, folks, is, uh, and it's it's gonna it's gonna be work, and we've got a lady I'm meeting with her next week, and she wants to help put this together. But what our vision is is to put together a list of providers, right? Attorneys, roofers, plumbers. Electricians. Uh, electricians, people that do the hands-on work right. that uh, that is too dangerous for those of us that are older to get up on those ladders and do these things. Changing batteries right. and... Uh, clean the gutter out. Yeah, you know, clean, clean the roof and gutters. Right. But 
I, I know right now, answering my own question, Seniors Helping Seniors, which is one of the sponsors for this program, Yes, Seniors Helping Seniors has a service where they'll go out and change batteries right. and, and, and smoke detectors. They'll clean gutters. They'll do things like that. And yard and, work. They yeah. just got another. I had a caller last week that wanted somebody to do some yard work. So that's yeah. I recommended them. But to charge is $16 an hour, $32 mm-hmm. for a block our to our block of service right and and, you know think about it folks if you pay pay 32 dollars to have somebody come in and fix two or three things that if you got up on that ladder and blacked out and fell down you could kill yourself had a classmate of mine from the naval academy a four-star marine general was doing that very same thing at the top of a ladder fell and killed himself. Mm, mercy. You know, mm. uh, you know we, we have to use our head, and we can't be a penny wise, pound foolish. Uh, you know, it's nice to save the money. Right. But it's also smart to make wise decisions on how do you use that money. It's great to save it and leave it to kids, but... Um, I also think it's smart to use that money to take care of yourself safely. Absolutely. And I want to also put a plug in for our partners that have made this show possible as well, that you've mentioned at the beginning of the show and and after the break. All of these businesses, I feel confident in recommending every single one of them because we know them. They're trustworthy. They are not going to take advantage of the senior caller. So... Uh, recently, I've had a, f- a few calls regarding legal. So we've got an excellent, like Bill Johnson's been on your program numerous times, and yep, you bounce yep. a lot of things off of him. So yep. these are people that are experts in their field, and they're not going to be taking advantage of you. So regardless of what kind of issue or, or thing that you're looking for, call me at 473-7770. We've got wonderful resources, wonderful partners, and you could feel confident that you're going to be treated, you know, ethically and, and right. And that's so important because, uh, you know, as as you listen to this radio show, um, we talk about Nielsen ratings and all this other stuff. But uh, we have pretty good information that tells us that on a 15-minute on a uh, access to the radio show that uh, roughly 2,500 people rotate listening to uh, WMEL every every 15 minutes. So when you start thinking about that potential advertisers, uh, think about um, those of you that have children or yourself might be in business. Think about the advantage of using radio. A radio used to be uh, the prime way to reach an audience. Uh, uh, radio is making a great comeback. And, uh, Definitely. You know, I like to think that uh, what we've done here over the last 16 years, because radio station WMEL was the third radio station in over 11,000 in the entire United States of America that carried our show, The Elder Hour, when we first started it back in 19, or in 2000, December 7, 2000. We were the third radio show in over 11,000 that addressed senior issues. Wow. And we picked up on the fact that uh, people need information. And how do you get it out? You do it on radio, you do it on television. So if we can get articles in Florida today that talks about our expanded TV coverage on uh, on the radio, and right. I, folks, uh, during the break, I asked Kay, I said, Kay, when you get a chance, call uh, the guy that were there at the VA is in charge of the VA and see if he'll shoot a 26-and-a-half-minute uh, DVD with us next uh, Friday at, at our offices when we do, we'll take five new TV shows to put on our network. But we want to produce a 26-and-a-half-minute DVD on VA aid and attendance. Right. Where you go to get it, how you get it, who qualifies, what are some of the benefits of it? Uh, and there's just there's just so much. But right. think of that if if people know that that is available, that's on archived on our website, and all they have to do is tell somebody if you if you got a friend that needs help, and you know that they were in the military, right. see, 
take a Go to the website. Take Absolutely. a look and see what it does. Absolutely. Well, you remember several months ago we had this couple that were concerned because they were going to lose their condominium. Right. They had to put out so much money for their daughter's surgeries and so forth. And after talking to her, I discovered her husband was a veteran. And we gave him that beeline to try to talk to um, the, the individual that I, I resource out. And they got within three months. You know, sometimes it takes a little time to get through the system, to be honest yeah. with you. But it went retroactive. And they just, they were so gracious. It saved their condo. It saved their condo. Yeah. And so, yeah you know, uh, there are a lot of, um, there used to be a TV show, um, like 10 million people in the city. It was about New York City. And it uh, talked about all the many untold stories. The thing, same thing happens, Kay, in everyday mm-hmm. life. There's so there's so much information out there. Right. The uh, the real trick is how do you cut through all the, the the garbage and get get to the real apple that's still in there. Right. Exactly. And you know, like I say, it's it's changing all the time, but the needs are there. So we are formed to complete the services to provide you with appropriate resources. It can be legal. It can be financial. It can be affordable housing. Any one of these type of things that people have actually commented on from our even survey, it's all the needs are, are still the same. Yeah. So basically, do give us a call. We'll do our best to try to help you in, in the, the right Mike direction. Fell down, folk, it, the mic fell down. The mic fell down to try to eat K. It just so she, <laughs> she caught the mic. So You know, that's the advantage, John, our uh, Fern. We need to have this, this show on TV. All these things that happen to us here in the in the, in the room, we don't get the people don't get to see them. They just get to listen. This would have been America's <laughs> funniest video here. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, folks, Kay and I enjoy trying to do the very best we can to get good, solid information out to you, so that you can cut through all the minutia and trying to live a cost-effective, happy life. Uh, Okay, and um, we had a couple of minutes ago. What are some of the things that you personally, Kay Kaiser, have felt good about in a year that you've been the information specialist, and how do you think that you're going to be able to continue to help people? You go ahead. you got a minute. Okay, as I hold this microphone up, (laughs) I don't make any more noise with it. Um, I take it, you know, I don't consider what I do a job. I have the the opportunity to feel in my heart if I make a difference in just one person's life, then we're doing our job. But obviously, it's it's a number of people throughout the day, and I know it's going to grow. You know, it's a five hundred calls. Some people I've talked to maybe six dozen times. I think, like I said, they I think they just put our number up there on the refrigerator and they call me back several months later. But it's rewarding to know that we're making a difference in so many seniors' lives. I think it's important, Kay, that people understand by virtue of the fact that they are returning and coming back for more information. That's right. That tells us that they felt that or believed that the first information that you gave them benefited them. Absolutely. And when they needed an answer, a new word to come back. That's right. So with that thought, folks, I want to thank all of you for listening to our show today. It's been a pleasure to have Kay with me here in the uh, production booth. And uh, we'll be back next week. And uh, it's a free time. And so we'll think about doing a special show next week. So have a great weekend. And uh, watch our new TV shows at 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday on Channel 499. Thank you. Bye.